So hey, uh, this is Bisu again today, and I've got Donna with me again because I decided that I get scared making videos by myself. No, she doesn't. No, I don't. She doesn't at all. No, I don't at all. <laughs> Just train that camera on me. I'll start talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Anyway, today, the reason I really want Donna in this is because someday Donna may be doing her own. Because if you think that I'm a little bit funny, you ain't seen nothing yet. Once she gets comfortable with this, we're going to have to edit her like crazy. I don't want to be edited. <laughs> anyway, no Donna, Donna had an idea that she made this really pretty little necklace when Javi comes around this side. I'm not going to try to hold it up because it's just going to blur and we're dealing with these blurring issues, guys. So just bear with us. But she made this really pretty necklace with the cameo set in a very humble lace edge bezel. Now, if you're not familiar with lace edge bezels, they're those silly little bezels that have the, the loops that go all the way around them. And you might have said, oh, you know, what do you do with that? I don't even like how that looks. Once I show you what to do with it, and you see this necklace and you see this bracelet I'm wearing, you're going to be so all over those bezels, I'm afraid I'm going to run out of stock in like two days. But, look at more. Once I show you how an art bubble can go over an image in one of these bezels, your brain's going to be on fire to make new art charms. So before I just keep on yakking, I'm going to stop here. You're going to come over here with me and Donna. <laughs> yeah. I made that necklace. I know. I mean, it's yeah. 10 years old. I, I made, I I made so these much. too. In fact, this, this is a lace edge bezel with beer cap in it. I'm going to show you that too. So get on over here already. We're going to show you how it's done. Okay, so everything that's on this craft mat here is stuff that we're going to be using today. And this is so easy, guys. You're going to be loving it. So many ways to go with it. In fact, I'm going to take this necklace off, which I forgot to do. Well, it goes with your glasses. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm wearing my glasses now. How high you can't see that. Um, this is a takeoff on a beer ring. It's a Stella Artois um, beer cap, which I love me a Stella with a tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> but the thing that's really cool about this necklace is that if I slowly flip it over, you'll see that it's a locket. Ain't that just something? Yeah. You know, Donna, I left my paper with all my skews up by my desk. Do you think you Five dollars could... and I'll go get it for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give you the skew number for this locket and I went up to get it and like a dodo bird I left <laughs> it up on my computer. But also, Donna made this nice cameo necklace with the brown and sepia chocolate. Well, my dear, Is it it's right next to my computer, I believe. Well, Do I have to stop the video? Come no. get it. Hopefully you'll find it. Okay. Is it a printout? It is a printout from the website. <laughs> oh, I thought I was so prepared. Here it comes. That's what well, you know. What you need me. That's all. Yeah, I do. I need you desperately. No, me. that ain't that's not that it. That ain't it. Let's pursue. Okay, Javi, you're gonna have to stop tape them. Okay, so this is what the order looks like from Bisa Boutiques that I pulled everything for this video, and the SKU number for this locket is FIG 05707. It's raw brass, 31 millimeter. And as you can see, it fits very nicely on the back of this 35 millimeter bezel, which is what I put the Stella cap in. This might make a good video all by itself at some point, so maybe we'll consider that and do that. You might really enjoy that. And I'm going to show you how to set a cap in one of these two in just a minute. So let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to try to give you as many SKU numbers as I can because everybody said they liked that last week. So we want to make these better and better. And this is the necklace that Donna made. And again, what's so neat, neat about these lace edge bezels is because you can pull these little loops out on them. Let me see, like, 
See, I could pull a loop here. This one's got one pulled out. I could pull some out down here, and I can hang stuff like she did. She pulled one up here and made it hang. So now you've got a pendant. Or you could pull them to the side like I did here and make a bracelet. So this is an 18 by 13. This is an 18 millimeter. This is a 25 by 18. We have all this on the website. Um, let me see. Um, 18 millimeter is BEZ06469. 18 by 13 is BEZ06473. 25 by 18 is BEZ6474. So we'll try to get Javi to put the little white marks up underneath so that you can get those numbers and write them down. And I will also put them in the description of this video, so if you just scroll down, they'll be there for you too, like a parts list, okay? But this, is, this came out really good, and it was so simple to set. I'm going to show you how these get set. I'm going to start with this one. I made this simple little art charm pendant. All I did was cut out a little piece of text from, I think it's Tim Holtz, scrap papers. And um, I set it down in here. And you know, if you get this cut just right, you don't even have to use glue to set it. I'm going to show you. Now once again, I have a flush cutters. I have a needle nose pliers. And I have a chain nose pliers, which are a flat, flat nose. These are chain nose, flat nose, or combination. Flat nose, either way, is good. Um, these are our three main tools that we use in making a lot of the jewelry that I show you from the videos from bisuboutiques.com. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this is first thing before I put my image in, I need to decide where my top hanging hole is going to be. So I've decided it's going to be right here at this loop. And all I do is take my pliers and I just pull that up. And you want to try not to touch the back surface when you're doing because I noticed when I did this, I did this very quickly, I got some marks on the back. It's not the end of the world, but it would be nice not to have them. So just pull it out flat from the top. And then I'm going to decide, let's see, do I want to put some stuff at the bottom? Yeah, I do. This one comes about straight down through the middle. So for balance, I'm going to pull that one out. Okay. And then I'm going to skip one and pull another one out. And I'm going to skip one and pull another one out. Okay. Don't want to pull too many out because then it'll interfere with you being able to set your item. Okay, so this should hang pretty good, I think. Pull this a little bit more. What do you think, Donna? Look good to you? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to tuck this down in here. Now, this one isn't quite as flush. So I'm gonna, I am going to take a little bit of this just scrapbook glue, you know, from the dollar store. And just put a little bit on there just to make it stick a little bit. But if you get this tight enough, <laughs> you don't even have to do that. It'll just go down in there and you'll be able to set it with the art bubble because that's what's going on top. So I want to get this in here nice and straight with my hanging holes or it's going to look kind of off kilter. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And then this is my art bubble, which is base 06231. No spaces. B-A-S-E 06231. It is a 30 millimeter art bubble. And we have a section on our website called Art Bubbles. Now I'm just going to set that down in there, just like that. Now I take my chain nose. And again, it would be good if I had a pair of these that had rubber tips because you don't want to mar the back. So you just kind of go easy. Just bend it over. There's nothing to it. Just bend it over. I'm not going to worry about that for today. I'm just saying. I get the idea. Yeah, you could even like um, tape this one so it doesn't make more sense. I do have a few little marks there. So that would be a good idea to maybe tape your, lo your lower one while you're working on this type of thing. Or get a pair that you leave taped, or if you know you can find a pair that um, have um, the rubber on them, that would be a good thing. 
so you don't mark up your backs. There's also a way to do this, just rock it. And, um, I take the handle and push it against the, because it's already protected, and I push that against it just to get it going, and then it, it seems well, to manage try that. Does this, this It would probably be... won't work because we're on camera. Yeah, it's work, it won't but work. I would... it's, this won't go down. No, but I've done that before. Camera. Yeah, it I've done it. Like... I've done it where they, I've just rocked them like mm -hmm. just gone like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it gets it started the right direction. Yeah, it goes just easier. just rocked it. But the fastest and best, most secure way is this. But did yeah. leave some marks, so uh, this should be taped. But I'm um, just for the video, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and do these today. And then remember, you can just tape this. Or you could um, learn to the rocking style. It's good on the bigger ones. Okay, so then what I could do is I could just get, you know, a few little jumps. And hang, you know, a couple little beads here. They're just endless possibilities which you could put under that dome. Yeah, really. You know, you can see how I could just hang that mm -hmm. full. And for the lack of time, you know, I'm not going to keep finishing it, but you can see what a finished one looks like, right? Right there. Okay. Another thing I started is I did one. This is the 18 millimeter one, which I, yeah, it's BEZ 06469, no spaces. Okay, now I'm going to do another one. And I've already pulled my loops out, you see. Got my bottom one on top so they go together. Now I'm going to put my little image in there, which I just picked text. And this one's going to just fit right down in there. Because I cut it a little big. So that's the trick. If you cut it just a hair big, then, oh, okay. then it'll... The only thing is, is, I think that's a little crooked. But again, for the sake of the video time, I may not fix that right now. I don't know. Sometimes it's a little fun to be a little bit off, but... I wanted to make earrings out of these, so anyway, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead though for today, and then again just put the art bubble in, and these come in sets of six, base O seven six eight seven B A S E O seven six eight seven. In case you want to find, or maybe you have some already. You know, a lot of people have this stuff for scrapbooking. Once again, just pushing them over. I really do wish I'd remembered to tape this. I kind of pull things together quickly today. And that tells you one thing. I don't use these humble little bezels enough myself. But I'll tell you what. After today and all this stuff I figured out here, I made a lot of this jewelry in very little time today. You know, and that's what it's all about. You know, a lot of us don't have tons of time to be learning techniques and making things. But we love get our stuff out for an afternoon and have some fun you know so okay so now I have two so to make them into earrings so so simple take a junk ring and I'm going to take maybe three of these little beads here and I promise guys I'm working more on keeping my hands in the video and and showing you more clearly, and so is Javi. Javi's only been making these videos for about a month. So I think she does an awesome job. I do too. Just, we have the biggest problem we have is this camera has an issue where it doesn't want to focus like it ought to. But how cute is this? I really like them. You know? I can talk and look with alcohol inks as I've got the stains to show it. Just take and thread that on your jump. I have an oval jump ring here. And then go ahead and put that through and close it. And once again, I'm using the jumpy tool. You see how I use the tump jumpy tool as leverage. And then, let's see. I think that will just go right through that loop. So I'm going to move this over. And just hook it on. Look at that. How easy was that and how fun. I mean, I want to take and wear these right now. I love these. I don't even care if the wine's a little bit crooked, the text in there. Who cares? 
I like him a lot. Uh, yeah, well, you know, he and my druthers, yeah, I do care. I think I wouldn't like the text. You'll be changing it as soon as it's over. Yeah, but, you know, I just want to see how to do it. Look at that. I made a pair of earrings with text. No resin, guys. No dumbing resin. If you have resin fear, I'd like you to get over that someday. You need to. But if you need to make something fast, these little, I know, art bubbles really will do the trick. Here's another thing you can do with text. I have an 18 by 13 here. And the problem with the 18 by 13s is you'll pull your top loop up to hang. Because remember, you got to pull your loops out first. But when you come down here, you've got two. You That's don't have just one. Into yeah. When I was using them yeah, for that Yeah, so one you bracelet. can't do that. So we're just going to have to deal with it. And this is how we're going to do it. I've got an image, which again is a little bit big so that's going to make it good because I can tuck it down in there real easy and I don't need any craft glue okay but you know you can you know whatever you want and then I have a glass dome for this one the glass art bubble this one it's a low dome glass art bubble and it is base 07652 so B A S E 07652 at bsudboutiques.com or like I say you may have some already which is fine don't have to use mine. I appreciate it if you come to my site since I teach for free. But hey, you know, if you got it already, you don't need to buy any more, right? You may have a lot of this stuff already, especially if you do scrapbooking. Scrapbookers have this stuff. Again, once again, you know, I want to just tuck that down in there. Now this bezel is a little bit high domed, and so it's resisting a little bit. But I can get it in there. It may take me a little bit longer, so I'm just going to set it down and let you look at it. And then what I would do is I would probably hang this here and this here for balance, and then maybe a little pearl over that. Oh, I like that. And then that would make me a real pretty little pendant. So that's how I do it. I'm going to work more on this later because I really want to get the, some tape on the bottom of these to finish this one up because this. The glass domes are a little bit higher, and they take a little bit more effort to set. They're not hard, but it's just going to take a little bit longer. Okay, bat people. I got any bat people here? We carry this silly bat cameo at the site. It's, um, let's see, it's CAM06558. C-A-M-06558. No spaces, just like one word. Okay, now, if you wanted to make this into a pendant this way, you would say, well, I'm going to do that. Well, I'm going to show you. Pull out this loop and go over to the other side and pull out the coordinating loop on the other side. Let me set that down so that you can see it. And maybe don't zoom too much, Harvey, so we don't get a lot of blur. It's going to be like that. Okay. Now, I am actually going to take a little bit of E6000 to set this. Donna is going back back because she doesn't like the smell of it. I gotta tell you guys, I've done videos on glue and I know E6000 is toxic but it's secure. So just keep it off your skin as you notice. You saw my technique there. I just squirted around the back. I didn't get any on me. Now he's in there and he is not coming out. Even if I didn't put those loops down, which I, you know what? I really wouldn't have to. In fact, right now, for lack of time, maybe I won't. But what have been would have been cool, and I may do it later after that setup, is pull this one out and hang that little bead there, and then put chain, maybe some gunmetal chain up. And there you go, bat people. Yeah, pink bat. Bat neck. It, you know, it just seems like whatever I do, I reach for one of those because I even like to put it on another finding because uh -huh. it gives a finished edge to the I have a necklace doing. of these these I think it's a 25 yes yeah, a 25 by 18 I have a necklace of these that goes all the way around my neck and I have them set with um, fake Tahitian pearls or oh that would be beautiful check Tahitian pearl. I wear that necklace a mm -hmm. lot it's so classy and it was mm -hmm. so simple and all I did is pull these out I think I pulled them out a little bit further over one over maybe to connect and it just goes all around the neck and it is just so classy and it took no time whatsoever to make. Okay, so now here we go back to the bearing thing. And this bearing has been set in a 38 millimeter. 
bezel. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Now this one is actually drilled in the back, so like if you had wanted, you could have set this onto a ring with a rivet first, or a filigree or anything else you might want to do, but I didn't use it. What I did is I used one of my turtle backs, and I set the, the bearing the way I usually do from my bearing video. You might want to go back to see the video on the beer caps, and then I put that in lace edge bezel, and then I have some things hanging from the bottom, and then the sides, and I'm gonna make a cute necklace on it, maybe for me, because it's a bee. This is actually Brooklyn Ale. And my friend Beansy, who I guess was raised in Brooklyn, if I have it straight, sent me these as a gift. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. I like the different breweries. I'm not a huge beer drinker. I just I just like the caps. They're very cool. They're, they're hard work in the and if you want, caps. if you go to my blog, Bisu Boutique, let's see, what is that? I got that. BisuBoutiques.TitePad.com We'll put that link up for you. B-S-U-E-B-O-U-T-I-Q-U-E-S dot TitePad.com um, I write in that blog almost every day and I did a blog post yesterday about using the bearings and why it's okay to use them. It's actually advertising for the company. So unless you're going to go into a great big line, it's not a problem and you can use them and it's fun. So go back to my bearings um, uh, video, which is, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago and you're going to see how I do it. Anyway, here's a blue moon that I did and I set in to a 35 millimeter lace edge bezel, which is part, because I know you guys like this, and I'm like, Trying to accommodate by giving you the right numbers. Oh, it's Bez 6, B E Z 6. That's what it is, because I pulled these out separate. So, anyway, just to show you really quickly before we finish up today how I did this, you go back to the technique that I showed you in the bearing video of taking the cap, the chapas, or crown. Actually, that's what the company's called. That's the professional name for a beer cap. Did you know that? I didn't. Uh, it's a crown. They call That's them crowns. Yeah, yeah. We have a design team at Bisu Boutiques now, and one of our members who used to do a lot in the business world actually called up Miller Coors the other day and talked to them about the use. You know, that's of, a good thing to check of chapas or caps or whatever, yeah. and they call them crowns. And they hmm. corrected her. They <laughs> said they're called crowns. I said, okay. <laughs> you can read about that on my blog, bisuboutiques.typepad.com. A lot of interesting things in there. And from the design team, too, you're going to be hearing a lot of stuff. They are my advisors. Anyway, this will just fit right in there. So what you see is I pulled out the edge with my chain nose, very simply. Okay. Now I want to line it up because I don't want it to be screwy looking. And I'm just going to set it. And I might set a couple pieces here and there first, kind of just to hold it, you know, as I go around to get it nice and even. And then go back and fill in. So that's what I'm doing now. It's just that way it won't slip away. Yeah, basically just crimp. But once again, guys, do get some tape on that lower jaw. Because, um, or more, or else get yourself some flat nose pliers that are made for wire working, which, um, I do have some, but they're not close by. We have had a dilly of a time today making this video. We had to stop and start. Somebody came, knocked at the door. Then the phone rang. Then I forgot my paper with all the skews. I mean, it's just been... I know, it's crazy. Oh, jeez. It's just been nuts. But anyway, that's all there is to it. So now yeah, I got That has just such a nice finished look. Blue moon. Well, I'm going to make some beer rings. So now I've got uh, two brass ox your wires from over here in this pile that you can't see probably because it's probably off camera but here they are we saw these at the side I like them because they look like they're handmade but they're not uh, you can make your own too you know I think I had a Bobby video makes her own. Oh, you should see what Javi does with wire man we're going to get another video on Javi yeah. Javi doesn't even use a jig and she gets her earrings mirrored so perfectly you never know she's a little stinker that Javi she's so talented Okay, there you go. Blue moon earrings. The last thing I had to show you 
And then we'll be done today is this fairy that is a cameo from our website. I don't have the SKU, but if you go to the cameo section, you're going to find her. She's really kind of a right, bright red, but I used um, Stream and Latte alcohol inks on her. Scrubbed her back with that nasty little sponge. Like I showed you in the video from the other week, go back about two, you'll see it. How to colorize the different... Um, Cameos, only I use Gilder's paste on them. Well, now I'm, I'm doing a lot of alcohol ink. And we're going to have a lot more alcohol ink videos, too. But anyway, for her to fit her in, I'm thinking, okay, i gotta, I got to pull out the top. So that would be this one. And then I think I'll pull this. And I think I'll pull this out. And I think I'll pull this out. So they can hang things from it. Oh dang, I think I'll just pull them all out. Here, just pull if them If you're gluing it in place anyway. Yeah, if I'm gluing it in place. Oh look, someone else is coming. It's Rob. I told him to wait. Oh, that's Rob. Down. Okay. Yeah. Bringing Andrea oh, over Oh, he's to bringing pick Andrea up. over to pick you up. Yeah, okay. So, once again, a little bit of E6000 in the back of there. And smash it down in there, rub it around so it stays. This will make it very secure. And then that way, if you didn't want to put the prongs down, you wouldn't have to. So there's another option. They kind of stick up a little bit, but it's not bad. I'm going to leave this one alone for now. Okay, so um, I have a bunch of really cute little beads here, and I have a bunch of really cute little leaves. So imagine if I did this, kind of like this one, stuff hanging down, you know, on little clusters. And then, like, these beads going up the side, along with some little leaves. Isn't that so pretty? Leaves and berries. How nice. I can't wait to finish it. So I'm going to finish it. And in a day or two, if you come to visaboutiques.typepad.com, which is my blog, you will see the finished pieces. And then I'll take a lot of nice close-up shots, front and back, for you so you can see all of these. And try and include the SKUs for you again. But I think I gave you a really good start for now. So I hope you'll have some fun with the humble little lace edge bezels. Because they present so many different connecting and hanging possibilities. So you think, oh, she's out of mounts. Or my other supplier's out of mounts. What am I going to do? As long as you've got lace edge bezels, you got the world in your hands. So have some fun, guys. And come visit us at bisuboutiques.com. We appreciate your comments. We're doing our best here to bring you good projects that don't take a lot of time and that you can execute in very little bit of uh, an afternoon and have a bunch of fun. Thanks a lot for watching.